Welcome back to the big board. Here we are, having a look at yet another somewhat large game. This time I thought I'd finally get around to the Eastern Front series or the Barbarossa system by friend, uh, Vance von Boris. That's a GMT game. Let me show you the box here so we all know what we're talking about. This guy, right? So we're gonna look at Army Group South. Uh, some games don't do a particularly good job of <clears throat> modeling, you know, where they're trying to model the entire, the entire effort going from 41 all the way through 44. You've got different sets of circumstances along the way. And one of the things that I've always been curious about, uh, as you probably saw when we played uh, Army Group Center, the 1941 title from 3W, from Masahiro Yamazaki, is that there's not many systems that you know, can do a good job of modeling that early part of the war because his, your history tells us, and well, the older history in particular tells us that it was just a total blowout and that there really wasn't much of a fight and all this sort of stuff. And in actual fact, that's probably only partially true. So looking at this system, it, uh, it seems to be very much focused on maneuver warfare and it seems to give a good nod to the history to the extent that it was the history the current versions of the history were at the time of uh, the design and I don't think I can tell you the design date specifically here uh, looks like 96 so you know we're dealing with something that's uh, 11 years old now System's gone through some rules revisions and whatnot and all that sort of fun stuff. Not going to get into all the rules right now. What I like to do with some of these larger games is uh, have a look at the supply network and the victory conditions first up. Just to kind of do a gut check <clears throat> based on what we know without any, any pieces on the board, without the, uh, the clutter of all the units getting in the way and air forces and supply hubs and all that sort of stuff, so MSUs and supply depots and things like that, just to look at what are the vitro conditions and what, what happens with supply and how does supply actually work and do a little bit of math and, and kind of see, hey, can, can the units get to where they need to get in the time frame? Uh, wh wh where are those objectives and how far away are they? And are there any restrictions to, uh, uh, you know, achieving those that we can see right off the bat. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have to put up with my croaky voice today. So, <clears throat> and we're looking at everything upside down. So just to give you some context of where we are, here's Lvov. Uh, here's the, uh, the uh, German-Prussian, I guess, border here. This is uh, West, po uh, East Poland, sorry. East Poland is here. The Ukraine starts in this area here. Kiev is all the way over here. So you can see that's you know, one and one and a half maps. This is oriented uh, uh, longwise here. And then we've got two maps going longwise this way. And then you've got Odessa down on the far left-hand side where the ocean is, where the blue ocean is. Uh, forget the name of the city where that red box is, but it's an important one. And you've got Romania, Hungary, Bessarabia, and, and whatnot, and the plains in the middle here. And I'm guessing this is the southern portion of the Pripyat, uh, Pripyat marshes and stuff like that. Uh, here's your north indicator. So first things first, let's look at the, some of the victory conditions. Uh, many of them are, are time-based. There are points for unit kills and certain types of units, but the primary focus is on capturing particular cities and in a given time. So for instance, Lvov here uh, needs to be captured in uh, by turn four to achieve uh, the full victory point allowance. Red cubes are gonna be more than one VP. So typically two or more. And I'm just trying to reach the, the chart because I was looking at this late last night. Got the, the creaky chair today as well, guys. <clears throat> so where are we? Of 
course, if I can find the chart. I will say there are a lot of charts in this, this particular one. Here it is. Yeah. So let's see what Lvov has for us. Uh, map E. Five VPs, one after game turn four. So you can see that if you can't knock this off quickly, let's get in and have a little bit of a look at that terrain around it there and see what it looks like. Zoom in. So it's fairly open. There's a river here, there's some somewhat some hills or rough terrain there. I don't even know all the terrain features yet. Clearly woods, swamp, <sighs> rivers. These are uh, major roads, not highways. And these are these these little dotted things are uh, tracks or minor, sorry, minor roads, and these are obviously rail. Uh, so we've got to capture that. The yellow cubes are one VP. So right off the bat, you can pick up a VP here to uh, as you as you try and cross the border. There's fortifications here. So if you see these see these lines here, they denote fortifications. There are. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. I'm looking at just some of these other uh, VPs to see if they're worthwhile mentioning. Probably not. Uh, you know, it's more to do with whether or not mandated attacks happened, whether uh, pan the, there's exits that need to occur uh, that have a VP penalty if they do not occur, and there are specifics for... Oh, that's... Yeah, here we go. Scenario uh, 5... Access player applies DRM to the, uh, so, okay, so there's an Antonescu table for the Romanians to be more engaged. Access player fails to exit three complete panzers, panzer divisions or, or motorized divisions. And uh, yeah, so there's stuff like that. I thought there was something here for armor. Yeah, per five steps of access motorized types destroyed there are optional VP rules. Each German division removed from play, etc. And so here's here's what the Axis would need, for instance, if they wanted to have a decisive victory, they would need 46 VPs, operational victory, which is basically what they achieved historically, uh, 38 to 45 VPs, and then a marginal victory would be 29 to 37. So I'll let, you know, we don't need to do all the math right now. It's not about trying to work out how we can capture all those points. It's just seeing where those points are and then assessing how we could get to them. So I've already taken seven minutes just to show you just a tiny little bit of the map, and I do want to uh, kind of kind of you know, move it along a little bit. So uh, a couple of VPs here, these are all ones, right? Uh, we do have a restriction right off the bat with the scenario rules for the campaign game where in the first, this is the edge of the uh, map E here. Um, what we have is for the first six turns, no access units are allowed to leave map E. Now, it may well be that it's not physically possible to do that, but there's an inherent limitation that that is not allowed. So that means anywhere along here, if there was a breakthrough, that ain't happening. You are not allowed to do that. So there are things that would probably hold us back anyway. Supply is going to be one of them. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the supply. I think I'm going to break up uh, the supply discussion into a separate video now because we're already seven minutes, eight minutes into this. So, uh, so there's one hard restriction there. There's a number of restrictions around how the Hungarians and Romanians uh, play with each other and Slovakians play with each other and what they are and aren't allowed to do and where they are and are not allowed to trace supply, which all makes very good sense. Uh, so the, but the big, that, to me, this seems like a big one. Not seeing all the pieces on the map seems like a big one to just say mandatorily, boom, this is the line where you will not pass until turn seven. So and this northern section We've got these green discs which represent where the rail lines cross over into uh, from East Poland into the Ukraine. The reason why they're important is because we have this, this uh, extra ability to convert rail from, uh, west, from eastern gauge to western gauge. And there's, there's uh, two extra points available to be spent in East Poland 
and allowing that conversion to happen at a slightly faster rate than when you move into the Ukraine. So each individual rail line can only receive a maximum of four conversion hexes a turn. You receive six a turn plus the two for, for this area to be used here and on this map. And then down in the south, I think that's map F down there, down in the south, you can convert four a turn. So basically you can convert one rail line. We're gonna go look at the south in a second because that has some interesting things down there that don't know where all the forces line up. I mean, if I wanted to be fully prepared for you, I would have reread Barbarossa and known exactly where all the different divisions and corps and motorized formations and panzer formations were exactly. However, I didn't. So we're just we're just running through this, having a look at it, and we're looking at the uh, looking at where where we're going to move and what we're going to potentially do. So we've got this these uh, transportation networks for supply because we can only move supply dumps uh, via these rail lines. So VPs, and then we come over here. And we've got Kiev. If, if if by turn fifteen Kiev is captured, there's a there's a bunch of VPs. What do you get for that? Map G Kiev eight VPs before game turn fifteen. Three after that. Keep in mind Kiev was not captured uh, by the end of this scenario, I believe. Nor was Odessa. Odessa became quite heavily fortified. Now, why do I have a blue uh, on Uman? Why is Uman have a blue? Well, it's worth two VPs. That probably should be a red one, but that's okay. So you can see also we've got some single VPs down there. Then if by 1015 we can capture this city here, I'm going to call that city, not Odessa, but probably uh, Kishinev. I can't read it from here, but I think it says Kishinev. You get, uh, so by turn 15 we can capture that. Now, see that pink, uh, that pink block in the distance there? That is where, uh, that's a supply source for the Axis forces. And here is the, you know, the, where that rail line and major road enter into you know, the, the enemy territory. And this is where we'll have to begin converting rail. It's a very short distance from here to there and from there onto Odessa. And it's curious to me, just how much force will be available to us to make any sort of drive this way. And are we going to be able to link up our forces that, uh, whoops, sorry about the camera, that start, you know, over in this area. So I think this will be, this will be a pretty interesting little exercise to assess, you know, what's your strategy going to be? You're going to try and drive hard on Kiev. You're going to go for Odessa. What's Odessa worth? Odessa is going to be worth Six. Six before game turn 19 and two after game turn 19. So that changes the, changes the equation pretty significantly. Okay. Uh, my camera has decided to have an erection failure. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I think this is probably a good place to stop. That gives you a general look at the VP locations. All the yellow and red cubes and the single blue cube on there. Uh, being the fastidious little doofus that I am, I'm gonna grab this little guy here and we'll put that there. All right. <coughs> okay, let's come back in a few minutes and have a talk about supply because I wanna dig into this a little bit and see, see how this will actually work.